so hello there everybody i hope you're having a lovely knitting day and today i wanted to talk to you about my favorite summer teas as a designer i am inspired by other people's designs too um obviously when constructing a circular yoke which is something i've not done before until the last year i'm late to the um late to the party on that one um mainly i've been knitting for 50 years but i've been knitting um from the bottom upwards and in in pieces as opposed to all in one on circular needles so this is quite a new concept for me um but I'm up for a challenge and I have uh, proved that, I think, by designing my own um, summer tea. But I thought I would share with you 10 of the not so well-known um, summer teas that are on Ravelry um, and tell you what has inspired me about them. So we'll start straight away. No big intro on this one because there are 10, so that's quite a bit. Yes, yeah, so I've um, just shifted around slightly. I'm going to try and do this from my um, PC. But um, what I've done is on my Ravelry uh, favourites, I have put a bundle called Summer Teas for Cooler Climates. Being that I live in Orkney, I'm obviously more interested in, in summer teas that are um, going to keep me warm as well as are light in cooler winds. Some, I mean, some of you in Scandinavia pr would probably understand that one too, because we are on, I'm sort of on the level with Oslo in Norway, here in Orkney. So, and on the other side, it's probably Alaska and Northern Canada. So, you know, um, Nova Scotia, those sort of places. So they don't have necessarily very hot temperatures in the summer but they do have um we here have a temperate um climate because on an island we're surrounded by the sea and we don't get much snow and we don't get much frost like we used to i can grow quite a few um plants that you wouldn't imagine could be grown here so yeah i'm growing tomatoes at the moment as you well know but i have to grow them in a greenhouse i can't grow them outside mainly because of the wind so therefore i'm looking for summer teas that are going to be um useful for a cooler climate so my first one was by a norwegian um designer called pickles and they also have their own yarn range which i would love to dabble in at some stage so i'm just going on my computer here and in this particular um picture the picture will be here you will see that she's actually used um one of her own yarns called pickles four ply it's a fingering four ply to make this particular top and this particular top is um knitted with a us6 needle which is a four mil needle so therefore she's using four ply yarn to create a dk almost like a DK weight, but it's not. It's a four-ply weight. And she's using um, bigger needles. So she's going to get through that a lot quicker than knitting with four-ply needle. Um, yeah, I think normally we would say 3.5 millimetre needles, wouldn't we, to knit with four-ply. Well, she's doing it on four mil. 
US 6. So I liked that because I thought, like most people, I will knit four ply, but I know it's going to take me a while, so I need to um, put that sort of that sort of space in my in my calendar to do it. But this, I don't have to. For me, to knit with a four mil needle is going to be much more. Um, oh, you know my brain, it goes out. <laughs> it's going to be much more speedy in its process, which I quite like, because our summer is a very short season. So if I'm going to knit something for summer, I'm either going to start at the beginning of the year, which I wouldn't. It'll probably be April, May when I start knitting for summer. So I would like to knit a few. So therefore, something that's speedy in its process is something I enjoy. So that is an inspiration I will use for future projects. And I've got some beautiful yarns, as you know, from the... Um, Jameson's, um, the Spindrift, which a lovely viewer sent me. Oh, I, she was so generous. And I have got a design in my head working up for that using four, millile four millimeter needles. So yeah, that was, that is a, an absolute, um, why I hadn't thought of that before myself, I don't know. I usually use a size um, 9, which is a 3.75 millimetre needle for these kind with projects with the spin drift because that gives it a slightly looser texture, but not 4 mil. I'd never thought that you could probably do that. So now I'm going to look into that and see what I can, um, how... I can uh, design something to use that sort of drapey format. So the, just to tell you a bit more about the pattern, I'm just looking over at my computer now. The, um, it's, as I say, it's in fingering four ply. The gauge is 20 stitches by 28 rows in four inch stockinette. And the needle size is US six. And the yardage is from 831 to 145 yards, extra small to extra, extra large. The pattern's in English and in Norwegian. Um, the pattern is seven US dollars. You can actually view the pattern on their website as well, the website for the yarns. In the picture, they, use, they used Pickles Pure Wool for the white one. The measurements laid flat, which is something I found sort of odd. I've not got into that yet. I'm thinking, I, when I measure my chest, it's all the way around, it's not flat. But measurements laid flat is chest 16.5, 17.3, 18.9, 20.5, 22 and 23.6 inches. The length is 19.3, 20.1, 20.9, 21.7, 22.4 and 23.2 Our Difficulty is set at easy. Well, it is. It's a stocking stitch stocking stitch uh, sweater the other interesting thing about this one is is because i bought the pattern i thought mm, okay i like this pattern anyway i want the pattern and i bought the pattern and it is knitted from the bottom up which is what i'm used to doing and i think some of you guys if you measured yourselves properly 
put all your measurements down and followed the pattern according to your measurements, you would find that a lot of these will fit without trying on. Um, it's just a matter of taking good measurements of your body. I find I don't have to try much on because I've done the measurement. I've done the measuring. I know the size of my body. In fact, I don't actually have to measure myself every time now. I just did it the once. Right, so that's that one. So the next one is petite knit. I've got a petite knit in here because basically she is a well-known designer and why not? Let's put, let's put one of hers in. And it's one that kind of inspired me more than anything from um the beginning of my trip down Ravelry Lane. <laughs> I've been on Ravelry for years, but I've never really used it until now. But it's the Anchors Summer Shirt. Now, again, this is perfectly fine for a cooler climate like mine. I loved the ribbing around the yoke. The sections of ribbing around the yoke. I love that. Um, it also sort of explains to me the construction of the yoke as well. So I'm looking at that and thinking, ah, yes, I can see how she's done that. So as a designer and a pattern maker, because, you know, when you're making patterns for circular yokes, this one wasn't easy because I had to find a way of increasing without it showing and that's um one of my biggest um aims in pattern making now is trying to show trying to increase but not showing that you've increased and so anyway this is on the petite knit ravelry store and it was suggested yarn was sandless garn lina um you could also use drops bell that's another linen mix and very similar to the sangless garn um lena uh, but the price difference there's a lot of difference in the price and if you're trying to um cut costs then you've got to think of that haven't you it's in dk and the gauge is 20 stitches by 28 rows on a four inch stockinette the body is mainly stockinette. The interesting thing I want to make a note of here as a designer is, and I never thought about it, was when you come to do patterning like a lace pattern or ribbing in this case, will the gauge be different? If the gauge is different, then you're going to have to change the size of your needle. That's just a little tip to everybody. So again, they're using a US size 6 or a 4 mil needle. And the yardage is 601 to 1200 yards, um, extra small to 5 extra large. So it's size inclusive really, isn't it? Um, it's 45 kron uh, Danish kroner, which you can um, calculate as to your um currency it's worked from the top down um and the yoke is worked in sections of rib with increases in the round followed by classic raglan increases when the stock in it stock in it step start again stockinette stitch section begins so that's interesting isn't it so basically you've done the circular yoke but then when you get to the plain stockinette, or as I would call it, stocking stitch, which is easier for me to say, you begin with some raglan increases. So I quite like that. That's something to remember. The sleeves are worked at the end, either on double pointed needles or on circular needles using the magic loop technique. Yeah, and, and I don't need to say too much more about that other because it's been reviewed so much by other places, but um, by other podcasters. But from the X, XS, XS or extra small, it's 85 
uh, 33 and a half inches to 60 and a quarter inches for the bust circumference. The length is from about 20 and a half inches to 26 and three quarter inches. Sleeve length is about four inches roughly. Yeah, nothing, not much more to say about that one. And so this next one is um, by a designer called Knitting for Breakfast. Um, and she has a lot of designs going on here. Uh, you might find a couple of them in amongst the ones I'm going to tell you about today. This one is called Wild Roses. And I just love the sectional lace patterning of this um, circular yoke. Um, if you look at it, the neckline is started with a lovely lace pattern um, with a little stockinette uh, gap and then there's some um, textural knitting, then another gap and I can just see where she's done the increasing there and then as it comes down to the chest the lace pattern goes over the chest um i just want to just check a little bit more on that and on the back if you look at the back of it as well it has um it shows you what the lace pattern looks like how low it goes at the back and then i love the little garter stitch ridges which don't look like ridges they look like little frills i like that and there's a another one coming up very similar which i like i like the color combination here she use has used two tones of a similar a similar color range so this is quite a cheap pattern actually at five euros um, the suggested yarn for it is Cardiff Cashmere Small Mominoki Yarn Rami Silk. Mm. I don't know if I've heard of that one before, but that would be interesting. And it's four ply or fingering. The gauge is 23 stitches and 35 rows in four inches in stocking stitch. They've used a three and a half mil needle or a US four. So that is that with the lace patterning is going to take a little while. It's one of those that you would want to do. Um, actually, if you're on holiday, it would be a nice one to start. But then you'd need a little space in your calendar to be able to to do this. So. I think this is something rather special, isn't it? Could you imagine wearing that to a wedding or something like that? So I think I would have, I would put space in my calendar for that if I was going to a lovely wedding or a lovely event. The yardage on that one is 733 to 1640 yards from extra, extra small to six extra large. So that's even a bigger inclusivity, isn't it? The, bur uh, the bust circumference for the finished garments in inches, I'm going to give a lot of these, is from 32.3 inches to 75.2 inches. It's obviously knit from the top down and is a little oversized, so it has some positive ease. Yeah, the, the yarn she used for this one was actually called Rami Silk by Mominoki Yarn, which is 60% wool, 20% silk and 20% Rami. Um, and they come in 100 gram balls. And she gives us the colouring as well. Colour one was Sakura and colour two was bronze. I do like those colourings, actually. Strangely for me, because you know I like my bright colours. The alternative yarn you could use was Small by Cardiff Cashmere. 
And she gives you the yardage you would need for both colours, which is good. Um, like me, she puts a note about the size shown in photos is medium on a model with a 37.7 inch bust and one with 6.6 .6 inches of positive ease. So that's interesting. That's a size medium that you can see in the picture. Yeah, I think it's in, it's in English, but it's also in six other languages. And she has um, translated, I think it's a bit of Italian down below. <laughs> Anyway, yes, it's a it's a lovely um, lovely top in, and there's a lot of different um, different color ideas going on in the pictures for that one. So yeah, I've talked a lot about that one because I quite like it. Um, anyway, the next one, I don't know why I'm holding this because I'm not really actually looking at it. <laughs> Let me go back on here the next one is by the same designer and knitting for breakfast and it's called the dahlia d-a-l-i-a -A. now this is more kind of a top i would like to do mainly because it's fluffy <laughs> and cooler temperatures here require fluffy so, um, yeah, it's got long sleeves on this one as well. It's more of a sweater pullover type thing. But, you know, in this kind of climate, I wear longer t-shirts and longer sleeve t-shirts anyway. This particular um, garment has got uh, fingering and lace held together to make a DK weight. So she's used Zucchero Filat, Filato Penelope Knit and Sofus Armoni Penelope Knit. These are yarns I've never heard of. These are obviously Italian, I think. Um, the gauge is 19 stitches and 31 rows and she's using, oh, I've lost that. Where did she put that? Where's the needle? Ah, yes. So she's using two needle sizes, uh, 3.5, obviously, for the ribbing and 4 mil for the body, the stocking stitch and the lace pattern. The yardage for that one is 919 to 2,734 yards. The bust circumference covers 33 inches right up to 66.1 inches. And because of the sleeves, that means there's more yardage. It's knitted in the round. And it's a top-down circular yoke sweater. There are gradual increases in the yoke um, up to the sleeves that will be knitted later, obviously. And the, she does give you the option to knit a short sleeve version or a longer sleeve version and customise the body for a standard or a crop length. Yeah, so I, I like that one because I like the patterning. Um, the one thing about the patterning is is it's sort of similar to what I've done with my Tresnes Summer Tea. It's, although there's a bit of stocking stitch more to the top here where I've got the lace pattern there. And then, so for about an inch or so, and then it starts with the lace pattern that goes across the top half of the yoke and then as you get towards the um, split for the sleeve and the body there is a simpler lace pattern which she mirrors in the body which I like that's something I I enjoy that would be something I would enjoy um, 
when you get to the, then there's a kind of a some more stocking stage before you get to the rib at the bottom i suppose if you were doing a cropped version you could probably finish it after that body lace the sleeve at the cuff part has a little lace pattern from this part of the yoke um, a little more complex and um, with with some ribbing which i think is very nice i like that i like the color as well pink some of these are paler colors i'm quite enjoying at the moment um the pattern is available at five five fifty euros i want to say five pound fifty you know my my currency you see but it's not and it, the languages are english french italian and spanish yeah i i like that one too uh, so that's a one that makes me happy um this next one is called the seashore stroll well living in orkney we have plenty of seashores and yes the wind blows <laughs> across the scarpa flow <laughs> not just the scarpa flow across all the little northern islands as well so you know you need a little bit of coverage and the seashore stroll is by jennifer shields toland uh jst design she calls herself and um the suggested yarn she's used for this particular one is Hudson and West Company Weld. It's not one I really know. I'm just going to click on that in a minute. Um, yeah, they seem to be... Ah, yeah, they're, the fibres are Merino and Corriedale, if that helps. In hanks. So you'd have to wind them up. Um, and I think they came from... Um, and another idea she gave was Cessia Origin. Now, I've got Cessia Origin. I'll put a picture up here somewhere to show you the garment I made in Cessia Origin, which was very nice to knit with, I will say. And I think it was made up with alpaca as well as, as, well as um, wool, if I remember rightly. This, however, is a fingering four-ply and um what she's done is it's she's knitted it up on um 3.25 mil or us3 and 3.5 mil or us4 needles which therefore makes it a four ply fingering um t-shirt which is going to be lighter it's true but it's not lacy as such there is a little bit of lace going on in there but it's textural and i can see the sessia origin working well on the um on the textural knitting it comes in sizes from one till nine which is the same as this one and it's finished um chest size is 32 inches to 64 inches it's written in english german and spanish the pattern is available at 7.50 us dollars and it comes from a um a collection that she's done called the sea collection i like anything to do with the sea so you know when i see some <laughs> when i see something like this it just it makes me sit up to have a little look the reason that this um interested me mainly was one of two things i'm going to show you another picture and that is the hems were had a little lace um insert at the top and at the bottom of the panel there's garter stitch in between and also a little bit of textural knitting for about an inch but it's very effective i like that and it's using a i'm gonna get up a minute it's using something that i quite like using that and that is this one 
but it has an extra garter stitch row and she's using it as a divider which I quite like um, that's something I think is really effective you can also have an I-cord neckline with this um, you can attach it at the end just a small one along here but I do like the textural knitting in between the lace bands that I think are probably another way of um, increasing the yoke, but I wouldn't like to say and without looking at the pattern, but that's how I would use it. So, um, I can't remember if I told you what the yard did, which was, but it's 810 to 2,624 yards. Um, there are pictures for long sleeves with a cuff, a cuff line here, just a small cuff line here, but with the um, textural knitting and the lace bands, which is nice. Yeah, so you can have short sleeves or full, full long sleeves, and she gives you all the notions and the um, yardage you need for both. Yeah, so that's a nice one. I like that. I, I, I enjoyed looking at that one. This next one is called Salt Breeze from Beach House Knits. And it's pretty plain, actually, bar the hemline. Now, you know I love hemlines. I'm going to stand up. Whoops. Hemline. Hemline, hemline. I love a hemline. <laughs> so, this one has got a hemline, but it's a wide band. Pretty much similar to the one I did on my Horossi sweater with the um, lacy band at the bottom and the bottom of the, the sleeves. I'll put a picture up there. But... Um, I like the, uh, I, I love the fact that it's a, I love the pattern. I love the lace pattern for that, around the edging. So, I don't know what it's called, but it looks good. Um, this is a double knit sweater, to me, because it's got 20 stitches and 30 rows, uh, for four inches in stocking stitch or stockinette stitch as she calls it but she's put the yarn weight down as sport or five ply so she's obviously wanting a little more drapiness in it by using a slightly bigger needle so she's used a us6 or a four mil um the yardage is 645 to 1537 yards and she's done sizes one to sizes nine now this is probably what you would call t-shirt because it's joined at the shoulder with little little short sleeves here um i'm just looking at the construction The T is knit flat from the top down, starting from the back. Those stitches are placed on hold. Then the front will be worked in the same manner as the back. Uh, once these two pieces are the same length, the body is joined together and knit in the round to the lace bottom. Now, I have done that and I have been trying to sample a few ideas um and then trying to write them down for patterns so that is um for me that is in the pipeline because um a lot of you've been interested in my blue cardigan and that is constructed similarly from the top down but with a shawl collar you're gonna it, it there's added extras to be involved in that one but yeah 
So, um, and obviously this is a t-shirt. It comes across here. It doesn't open up at the front. So again, that's slightly different, but I have been doing something similar with one for my special project, which will be coming up this month. You'll be pleased to know. Although I've not been able to get over to Westray to film it in in place, which I would love to do. It still might happen, even if it's next month. July is going to be a busy month for me. So the skill level on this one is intermediate. It looks quite simple to me. Okay, the intermediate part is probably the lace panelling at the bottom. <clears throat> anyway, so it sizes one to nine uh, to fit 30 inches to 62 inch bust. The actual finished measurements. Now, that means there's a little bit of ease in this one is 37.75 inches to 75.5 inches. In fact, there's quite a lot of positive ease in that. Um, so if you wanted to ha don't not have as much positive ease, then you really need to go down a size. If you want to do a bit more, if you get if you get to a size nine and you want to do a size ten, then personally, I think you just you just knit size eight or size nine, and it, that will give you the positive ease that you probably need to fit a size ten. The model actually is wearing the size 4, which is large, and with 9.5 and inches of positive ease at the bust. <clears throat> yeah, so that was a nice one. I, I, I liked that. Um, this next one is called the Hathor Tea, and it's by Ego Knits. Ego Knits. I'll say it probably, Ego Knits. And... Um, it's knitted in Gepard Garn Puno, well, this is a suggested yarns, Gepard Garn Cotton or Wool 5 Organic, and another one, Issaca Yarn, Issaca Soft. It's an Aran weight, this one. Well, now that's more useful for me here. Today it's a grey day, mm. which is why the picturing of me today is a bit, but what do you do? You can't you can't do anything about the weather, can you? <laughs> so my lighting is a bit poor today. Sorry about that. <clears throat> and it's um an Aran weight or ten ply. So you could mix up a few yarns together to make a ten ply. Um it's got a 17 stitch by 16 row um gauge over four inches in the lace pattern well the whole garment is lace so yeah <clears throat> you're not going to have to swap around needles which is good if you need to swap around needles if your lace gauge is the same as your stocking stitch gauge then you're fine anyway aren't you it's just that some because you're putting holes in things then you are loosening it up it's the same with fair isle if you're doing fair isle and you're dragging yarn across the back of your work you're tightening up so therefore you need a bigger needle and then go back to the main needle for your stocking stitch the pattern's in english danish because i think she's a danish designer i've heard um Danish Musings, the lady that does that podcast, she test knits for Agio Knits and I've seen some of the designs that she has um, uh, tested for this designer and I don't think she lives that far away from Danish Musings from what I can um, gather. I think that lady's name was Hella. Hella? I hope I got it right, Helen. Anyway, um, 
so it's knitted from the top down again it's joined here it's a join along the shoulder let's see what it says about construction it says that the level of difficulty for the construction is medium to difficult and it's only four sizes actually one two three and four but it goes for the circumference it goes from 45 inches to 65 inches so there's a heck of a lot of um positive ease in that one which would fit a size nine with a little bit of ease a three inches probably um total length is from about 18.5 to 20.5 inches the the um now, let me just have a look. Now, she gives a yarn for an alternative for a warmer version. <laughs> That's kind of it. Um, and that is the Puno, uh, which is Baby Alpaca, Merino and Polyamide from Gepard Yarn. And so that sounds quite nice. Um... She's give suggested needles of 4.5 mil, which is quite tight. Well, I would probably have done a five, you know what I mean? For an, for an Aran weight, five mil. But she says 4.5 mil and 3.5 mil, which will probably be for the ribbing, no doubt. Yeah. So that's, I like that one. I like the shape of that one. It's almost like a tank top type thing. Yeah, something like that. Now the Kaja top is by, um, by Mewson which is Caroline Jara's Ravelry store. And uh, she's just published this one this month. And it's yarn held together with um, two fingering weights to make a double knit. So the gauge is 20 stitches. Um, by 20 stitches, she's not given the rows, but 20 stitches for four inches in stockinette stitch. And she uses, she's actually using a smaller needle here. She's using a 3.5 mil needle, a US 4. And I think that is probably because of the shoulder work needs to be quite tight because other, otherwise it's going to stretch out, isn't it? And also depending on the yarn you're using. She says that yardage is um, 1,203 to 1,444 yards, which is small to extra large. It's not, a, it's not a big range of sizes, but I think if you changed the size of your needle, being that it's a double knit, you could probably get away with bigger sizes using say the size extra large and perhaps using a 4.5 millimeter needle you might get a much bigger size so that's always something to think about look at the pattern do a swatch again now if i was using 4.5 millimeter millimeter needles sorry for catching the camera <laughs> if i was using 4.5 millimeter needles i know that i'm going to get 4.5 stitches and six rows per inch so if i was to cast on for the extra large for instance I would have to check that against the um, pattern and see what she's put on for the cast on. I'm, I'm not doing that because I haven't bought the pattern yet. But um, yeah, it's, 
is try those things out. See what your gauge or your tension comes out like. And you'll probably find that you can get bigger sizes out of out of a, a limited range of sizes on a pattern. So, you know, there's there's always ways to do things. You can go up a couple of inches from if you use 4.5 mil needles as opposed to say a 4 mil. And in this case, she's using 3.5 mil. So you've gone up another three sizes. So it's worth looking at it. Um, so the actual measurement around the bus circumference is 38.6 inches to 46.5 inches. Uh, I'm just looking at that again because that doesn't seem quite right. But let me just have a look a minute. Oh, yeah. No, the bus circumference is 33.5 to 43.3 inches. And the length is about 22.8 to 25.6 inches. And there's an approximate ease of 3.9 to 5.9 inch so if for instance yeah it on the larger sizes it seems to be about 3.9 inch positive ease so yeah i would play around with it i would play around with a bigger needle for a bigger size if that was me yeah, now she has suggested a couple of yarns on this one. One was Sandness Tin Lina. That's the thin one. Two strands held together. Although I would probably have gone with Sandness Garn Lina, which is double knit anyway. Um, but if you want to do two colours held together, yeah, go for Sandness Tin Lina and then you can have two, two strands, one of one colour and one of the other. Which would be nice. That would be interesting. And I think that's what she's done. She's done a sort of a beigey colour with a creamy colour. Which is quite nice. It's effective. And she's got it over a black top. Um, either a black bra or a black t-shirt. I think you definitely do need the smaller needles to get that ribbing to stay on your shoulders. But that's per the pattern but if you want to if you're doing something um for a larger size then then you've got to play around with your your choice of needle um this number nine is called the cristallo or cristallo probably <laughs> of by knitting for breakfast again so i've got about three knitting for breakfast because quite liked her designs there's she's got lots of them have a look but i love this one because of the two-tone effect and what she's done is and you can see it for definite and it's something i might use using the fingering weight jameson's spin drift and a pair of size 4 mil or US 6 needles. And that is to have a lace yoke in one colour. And then when before you even divide for the um, body and the sleeves, change the colour. But the effective use of that is using that wavy stitch. Because when you change the colour on the wavy stitch, the actual yoke becomes more lacy looking and wavy looking as a yoke would in the old days. So I love that. And I love the fact she's used white and that very deep foresty green. But she has other colours in it as well, like um, a grey beige with white. Yeah, so... 
I like I like that very much. Um, a little bit more about the pattern. Her patterns are not expensive at all. They're around about so this one is four point fifty euros. I think I've sort of the others were about five five six. She's also done the same top in a white, totally white, and some others in a sort of a dusky, dusky um, mauve and um, lilacs and things. There are plenty of pictures to give you ideas. So um, she used Drops Safran for this. Uh, well, she's saying the suggested yarns, let's put it correctly, is Drops Safran or Len du Nord organic cotton. They're sport five ply weights. Um, the actual um, gauge is 23 stitches by 31 rows over stocking stitch, four inch, four inches of stocking stitch. And she used smaller needles for this one, 2.5 mil and 3.5 mil, which is quite, quite small. The yardage is 1,072 to 1,444 yards. The bust circumference is um, 30.7 inches to 67.7 inches. And it's in English, French, Italian and Spanish again. She tells us a little bit about the Cristallo. I love that name, isn't it good? It's a summer team, two colours. It is fresh, versatile and with a good fit. It's embellished with a lace stitch around the neck and is enlivened by a wave stitch in body and sleeves. Yes, I do love that wave stitch, as you all know. My favourite. And will be used in many of my designs coming up, I can tell you, because I do enjoy the colour the, the things you can do with colour and a wave stitch. So it comes in 11 sizes from 30.7 to 67.7 inches. The difficulty level she puts down as medium or easy. Uh, I could, I would quite agree with that. It doesn't look too hard to do even the lace patterning around the yoke um i'm trying to see which she used for the green one ah yes she used the lend nord organic cotton um and she used white and green color one and color nine which i love those two colors together it was really nice it was quite a surprise it's more of a bluey green but i like that yeah, so the very last one, the 10, is the Tresnes Summer Tea, which I'm wearing. And this is to be published at the end of this month, um, thirty first, round about 31st of July, unless there are any problems. I don't foresee any problems. I have got test knitters from all over the world. I'm so amazed that people wanted to try try it out for me so i've got a lady from australia i've got a lady from new zealand i've got three ladies from the united states and i've got a lady from canada this lady from canada is even trying it out in tunisian crochet I, I thought that was great. And she's knitting one for me, but she's also trying trying it out in Tunisian crochet. So watch, the, watch this space for that, because I think that's going to be very in interesting. Um, and we've got one in, in England too, which I'm pleased to say I was getting worried that nobody in England would want to knit it. But we have got someone in England that is um, knitting it too. And I think she's going to be doing a second one as well because she tells me she ordered the wool for it or the yarn for it. But I've got the the only one that is um I haven't got filled. The only space I haven't got filled is size nine. And to fulfil the um 
deadline of the 31st of July. I know that's going to be difficult just to um, get the whole thing knitted. So if there's anybody out there who would like to try to knit the yoke for a size 9 for me, just to the yoke, just to the split sleeves, sleeve and body split, um, the link is in the description to my Ravelry group. And just get on there and email me what uh email me from there um all the all the information on the t-shirt is on my group so you'll see the link at the end and i have done tons of videos on this t-shirt being a new designer i had to i had to do that because i needed to let people know i'm doing this as a pattern so it's out in the ether so hello there again i'm just got my editor hat on <laughs> and i enjoyed making that video about all the different um garments that i would like to knit myself um there are a few that i will be trialing out and um i will let you know about those over the coming months i am conscious of the fact that okay we're coming to the end of our summer in here in orkney in around mid-august but that doesn't mean to say that our new zealand um cousins and our australian cousins are not starting to get the um inkling of spring <laughs> so i shall be trying um out some of these little tops uh with the yarn that i have left in my stash because i liked them too and i can always have them in my wardrobe for next year uh just looking back on my um screen there but um i hope you enjoyed this little diversion to what I from what I normally do and that is a knit and chat usually but um or a little um a pretty little musical video <laughs> I like doing those little vlogs um and that you enjoyed that so if you did enjoy that then please subscribe and come back for a few more <laughs> I'll probably be having a break towards the end of this month. Um, but I have one or two little vlogs dotted across the month of July with a sneak peek into my secret project. So, yeah, if you're interested in any of those, then subscribe to my channel and you'll and we will and i will be actually trying to do a video on the project in the next month putting it all together i'm trying to get a bit of footage from the west from the isle of westray which is the setting for this little secret project so plenty to be looking forward to. Yeah. So thank you for watching and see you soon. And keep knitting. Oh, do you like the yellow nails? <laughs> so if you want to know more about my Tresnes summer tea, watch this video here and I'll see you next time. Keep knitting.